More than 1,000 people have drowned, making the perilous journey across the Mediterranean from Libya to Europe this year alone. The International Organization for Migration says the recent increase in the past few days has been in anticipation of an EU crackdown on refugees and asylum seekers. The flow of African migrants to Europe has, however, dropped since its peak in 2015. Beryl Oro has more on the latest attempts and rescues. At least 200 people have died in the past few days. At least half of them were lost in a shipwreck on Friday. On Sunday, an overloaded rubber boat capsized east of Tripoli. There were only 44 survivors. It's hard to know why there's been a surge in migrants and in the deaths, but for sure the weather is a little better. Secondly, it's the end of Ramadan, and that's typically a reason for them to increase the smuggling. But also, there's a recognition, I think, worldwide that the European Union is starting to manage the process better. So maybe they're equally trying to profit while they can. Smugglers will always put profit before safety. Efforts to reduce migration have hinged partially on training and equipping the Libyan Coast Guard to intercept smuggling vessels. However, reports of the conditions in refugee holding centers in Libya have caused widespread controversy and outrage among right activists. 10,000 migrants have been brought back to shore by the Libyan Coast Guard and put into detention. So there's a big increase by the Libyan Coast Guard in preventing smuggling. At the same time, the proportion or the number of deaths is increasing. We think this is because the smugglers are getting more desperate and are taking desperate measures and absolutely not caring for the safety of the migrants, putting them to sea in unsafe vessels. Despite the spike in deaths in recent days, the number of people lost at sea so far this year is less than half the number recorded by this time last year. Beryl Oro, CGTN. The International Organization for Migration says that smugglers will always put profit before safety and is lamenting the over 1,000 deaths for this year already. Migration is now the top priority for European politicians, with EU countries continuing to struggle for unity on how to share the burden of people who've arrived in their countries. EU leaders set out a deal at a summit here in Brussels last week dealing with the movement of asylum seekers within the European Union after they've arrived. It was crucial for German Chancellor Angela Merkel to be able to sell it back home to her Bavarian sister party and coalition partner. But it seems her government remains poised for collapse. The weekend's statistics also highlight how Europe's current migration disputes are more political than being about the numbers arriving. Libya's Coast Guard returned over a thousand back to Libya after rescuing them. And the total arrivals into the EU are under 50,000 this year, which is about 95% down on the height of the crisis in 2015, when over a million people entered the European Union. Jack Parrish, CGTN, Brussels. Well, meanwhile, for the second time in a week, Malta on Monday detained a humanitarian vessel that normally rescues uh, migrants off the coast of Libya. A spokesperson reported that the Maltese government denied the German charity vessel known as Sea Watch 3 to uh, 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 they re denied their request to leave port. Now, this was after the vessel concluded maintenance checks. Last week, the charity vessel Lifeline was detained in Malta following new government regulations to prevent charity ships carrying migrants from docking. Lifeline's captain attended a court hearing on Monday in Malta. The prosecutor said the ship was not properly registered. Malta is also investigating whether the Lifeline's crew disobeyed any orders in rescuing the 234 migrants off the coast of Libya. Well, certainly a harsher stance there from Malta. Let's get more perspective on the migrant crisis. We're now joined by CGTN's Yasser Hakim in Cairo. Uh, Yasser, of course, the death toll keeps climbing, yet migrants continue their dangerous journeys uh, across the Mediterranean, trying to, re to get to Europe. Europe, on the other hand, is responding much, much more harshly. And uh, many ask the question then, what African governments can be doing to stem this migration crisis? Well, yes, uh, obviously uh, we have to know that the number of migrants, uh, migrant attempts uh, have dropped significantly, uh, around 90% if you compare to 2015 and around 80 or 75% if you compare to last year. So uh, there, there is something that is uh, working uh, right. But 
but still, it's still a, a large number of, of, of deaths, a sad uh, situation. Uh, and if we look at the reasons, well, uh, three issues uh, that need to be addressed uh, in this. First of all, if you talk about security side, the security issue uh, is concerned with the conflicts in Africa uh, with, with either uh, terrorists, uh, groups uh, fighting uh, in African countries, in several African countries, and controlling borders even, or parts of borders of states, uh, allowing uh, uh, the, the route to channel uh, the uh, migrants uh, from one country to another until they reach uh, Europe or to the sea and then they reach Europe. Uh, there's also the conflicts between uh, rival politicians and, and conflicts within the country itself, which has led to the increase of poverty, increase of, of people who feel that they have to leave the country to seek a uh, better uh, life. So th there's the political side. Also, you've got the economic development that needs to be done on the, uh, by the governments of the African countries working together to try to improve the uh, uh, living conditions for African nations and African people so that they would not think of trying to, uh, migrant, to, to, to migrate illegally because some of them who have actually managed to, uh, 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 to survive uh, one of these ordeals uh, would actually think about doing it again. So they don't feel that it was a death uh, issue, so they would fear to do it again. But the situation is so dire back home that they would try to again to take this very dangerous route of illegal migration to the sea. And third of all is obviously African countries working with the rest of the world, Europe obviously, the US and other countries in the world to, to try to fight illegal migration to try to improve the economic situation in Africa and to improve uh, development, uh, some uh, social projects, economic projects and investments that would help uh, both sides because uh, a better uh, e economy in Africa, better living condition in Africa would suit, uh, would benefit even Europe and the rest of the world uh, and not just benefit Africa itself. So uh, those three spheres should be worked, should be uh, the, the, the core of any solution to the uh, migration crisis in, in Africa and the rest of the countries. Indeed, and of course those contributing factors you mentioned like security and conflict, they really combine for the perfect recipe for a migration crisis, but also for people like you, know, for people smugglers to thrive in this area. Why is it so difficult to stop their activities? Yes, these groups are very well equipped, very well funded. It's a very profitable uh, 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 job, if you want to say. It, it's very profitable to have, uh, to, to be uh, smuggling, because they're not just smuggling people. Uh, they're working with other groups, with militias, with p politicians, with extremists. They're smuggling uh, militants. They're smuggling weapons, which is very uh, profitable for them to, ha to work with other uh, gangs to, to smuggle uh, 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 weapons and, and, and militants. So it's not just about illegal migration. Uh, it's a group of, of, of different uh, uh, gangs that work together. They benefit from each other and political rivals as well. And you have uh, countries that have been uh, also accused of funding these groups to create instability in, in African nations and the Middle East. So uh, uh, they are powerful, they are well equipped, uh, and uh, they know that they are making very well good use of the uh, security vacuum in several countries such as Libya uh, uh, and other countries as well in Africa to, to thrive from, from this uh, lucrative business. So uh, it, it needs uh, the security cooperation between the intelligence services in, in several countries uh, in Africa to try to crack down on these groups. They ha there has been some success, uh, especially when Italy and European Union vessels and Navy uh, forces intervened uh, in the Mediterranean uh, in accordance with Lib uh, in cooperation with the Libyan forces and others uh, across the Mediterranean. Uh, they have managed to reduce the effects of these uh, gangs and reduce the number of uh, legal migrants and crack down on these gangs. But yet they, they, they are uh, there for, for, they have been there for years 
uh, and they know the whereabouts of, of, of the desert areas in Libya. They know where the hideouts are, the ch the, how to take the illegal migrants through the desert and through the borders. It will need more effort to crack down completely on these groups. Mm, indeed it will. Yasser Hakim, thanks so much for that analysis. Joining us there live from Cairo.